Hi, I'm Bob. Let's solve the last four problems for Chapter Ten today. For problem five, we can specify a model to explain new housing starts in terms of interest rates and real per capita income. To account for possible trends and seasonality, we can add the time trend t and three seasonal dummy variables, summer, fall, and winter, to the model. In this model, spring is the base season. The coefficient beta three captures the time trend, and the coefficients beta four, beta five, and beta six capture the seasonal patterns. Let's do problem six. For part one, we can write down the deltas as a function of gammas. Then we substitute for the deltas in the original model. Next, we rearrange the equation and write it in terms of the parameters gamma zero, gamma one, and gamma two. In part two, we generate three new explanatory variables. X one t, x two t, and x three t. We can regress y t on x one t, x two t, and x three t to obtain estimates of gamma zero, gamma one, and gamma two. For part three, the unrestricted model is the original model with six parameters, and the restricted model is the model in part two with four parameters. So the number of restrictions is two. The null hypothesis is that the parameters in the original model deltas follow a quadratic in the leg. We can read the two R squares. From the unrestricted and the restricted models, the degree of freedom in the unrestricted model is n minus six. We can use the R squared form of the F statistic to do the F test. The F statistic follows the F distribution under the null hypothesis and the six classical linear model assumptions. Let's find answers to problem seven. For the first question, to have a ceteris paribus interpretation for the long run propensity, the personal tax exemption in time t minus one and in time t minus two should increase by the same amount as the tax exemption in time t. Theta zero is the long run propensity. By definition, it is the change in the fertility rate. Due to a permanent change in the personal tax exemption, or it is the change in equilibrium. So we treat the changes in the tax exemption in the three time periods the same. Let's solve problem eight. We can first write down the strict exogeneity assumption, the sequential exogeneity assumption. And the contemporaneous exogeneity assumption. The strict exogeneity assumption is the third Gauss-Markov assumption for time series. It implies that the error term mu is not correlated with the explanatory variables x in any time period, including past, current, and future. The sequential exogeneity assumption is shown in the problem.
It implies that the Everton mill is not correlated with the current and or past values of the explanatory variables. The contemporaneous exogeneity assumption is as follows. It implies that the Everton mill is not correlated with the explanatory variables in the current time period. Now, it's clear that the contemporaneous exogeneity assumption is implied by the sequential exogeneity assumption, which is implied by the strict exogeneity assumption. For Pax 3, the OLS estimators are generally not unbiased under the sequential exogeneity assumption. OLS estimators are unbiased under the strict exogeneity assumption. In the last part, we consider a model to explain the annual rate of HIV infections as a distributed lack of per capita condom usage for a state, region or province. The Ayrton meal contains the other factors that affect the HIV rate, such as city and age. The sequential exogeneity assumption is as follows. It holds because the current and all past usage is not likely to change the current unobserved factors of the HIV rate. In other words, the past explanatory variables has no prediction effect on the future every term. But the strict exogeneity assumption may not be satisfied because people's choice to use a condom in the future will be affected by the HIV rate today. A higher HIV rate today and therefore a higher every term today may lead to a higher usage of condoms tomorrow. In other words, the past error term tends to have a feedback effect on the future explanatory variable. Thank you for doing the problem set with me. See you in the computer exercise. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.